Hi, thanks for listening. I want to talk about a woman called Kirsten Gillibrand. It might be Gillibrand, but I don't care. Um, she's, there's an article in the Huffington Post. Oh, God. You always get this nonsense about women don't get respect and, you know, and stuff. And it's, when women like Kirsten behave the way they do, it can make it difficult for the average person to see women as respect worthy or to be taken seriously, you know. Um, it's it's very difficult, no matter what field you happen to be in, where you are, it's very difficult to take someone seriously or have respect for someone when you have to walk on eggshells whenever you're around that person, right? The first thing I want to show here, right, is just out of curiosity, I'm just curious about something. I wonder what harassment means. Let's look it up, shall we? Oh, look, aggressive pressure or intimidation. Just remember that, right? Harassment means aggressive pressure or intimidation, right? That's what harassment is, real harassment, right? Let's hear what Kirsten Gillibrand has got to say. I couldn't tell my harasser to go fuck himself. That's the headline of the article. Uh, so she's got a, an harasser, right? Uh, and she can't tell this harasser, which is a man, to go fuck himself. Right, okay. Uh, okay, right, so right away from, I mean, this is what I mean, this, is, this woman is apparently a senator. Um, I've never heard of her. I'm now annoyed that I've heard her, because she's utterly useless and pathetic. Um, anyway. Let's read what it says, right? Senator Kirsten Gillibrand said Monday that when a male Labour leader harassed her about her weight several years ago after she'd had a baby, she had a few choice words she couldn't say at the time. Now, just to stop right there, this is why I focused on what harassment means, right? Now, uh, a male Labour leader harassed her about her weight. Now, I don't know about you, but I get this vision in my mind, right? This little image where she walks out the house, you know, she's walking down the street, maybe she's going to the shop, and a car drives past very slow, you know, creeps up on her, the window rolls down, it's him. You fat bastard! And starts throwing pies at her, or maybe he throws a salad at her and says, fucking eat that, you bloody fat bugger. You know, something like that, you know. If that happened, that to me is harassing someone about their weight. Right? That's what that is to me. If somebody says, I was harassed because of my weight, that's kind of what I picture. Someone kind of shouting at them in the street and stuff. And, oh, you're, look at it, look what we've got here. Beep, 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 fatty. That's kind that's harassment, that. That's kind of harassment, right? I wonder if that's what happened to her, because that's, that's the picture I have in my mind, so that's what this evil labour leader done, right? I've just had a baby, I've just been appointed to replace Hillary Clinton in the Senate, I have a lot to learn, so much on my plate, <laughs> and this man basically says to me, you're too fat to be elected statewide. Gillibrand recalled on Huffington Post Live Monday morning, at that moment, if I could have just disappeared, I would have. If I could have just melted in tears. Oh, Jesus, this is so sad. I would have. But I had to just sit there and talk to him. I didn't hear a word he said, but I wasn't in a place where I could tell him to go fuck himself. Right? She sounds very pleasant, you know. Um, so let's go through this paragraph and see what she's, basic, see what she's basically said here, right? Blah, 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 blah. And this man basically says to me, you're too fat to be elected statewide. What that means is, when she says he basically said that, that means he didn't say that. He said something completely different, but she translated it into that, right? And how do I know that? Well, first of all, that's a well-known women trick, right? They do that all the, they do that shit all the time. Uh, that's one way I know it. But the other way I know it is because in the same fucking paragraph, she then says, um, I didn't hear a word he said. So she's sitting there, she doesn't hear a word he said, but she does know that he said, basically, that, that you're too fat to be elected statewide. <laughs> I mean, so, so what we know from this is, that didn't happen.
happen, right? But what you have to understand is, right, somebody's talking to this woman and somebody makes a remark and says, uh, you're too fat to be elected statewide, right? Which actually says more about the electorate than her. But anyway, according to her, that's harassment. And we're supposed to respect her. We're supposed to uh, take women in positions like this seriously. No. <laughs> no. Margaret Thatcher, I'll take her seriously. Uh, Anne Widdicombe, I'll take her seriously. This? No. <laughs> Not a chance. Not a fucking chance would I take this seriously. What a joke. Uh, in her new book, well ain't that a fucking surprise. She's got a new book out and she's pretending to be a victim in order to plug the book. Off the sidelines. Gillibrand shares several anecdotes about male colleagues and political leaders making comments about her weight during and after her pregnancy. She recalled one colleague warning her about getting porky after the birth of her second child. Another lawmaker told her she's even pretty when she's fat. And an older senator once grabbed her waist and quipped that he likes his girls chubby. Right. So I'm guessing when you're pregnant, he put his hand on and went, Oh, eh, I wonder if she's a, a nice chubby healthy baby or something like that. And you thought, Oh, he's basically saying I'm fat. But, um, aye, in a new book. So if you're a woman, right, and you've wrote a book, right, and you want to sell that book, now the best option, right, I personally believe anyway, the best option is to write a book worthy of reading so that word of mouth goes around lots of people are recommending it and people eventually go oh, God, see, that's certainly a few people have recommended that book to me I think I'll read that you know but since she's wrote a shitty book and there's no doubt it's a shitty book and the reason I know that is because the tactic she uses to promote the book is to pretend she's a victim of harassment and play off of that because nothing gets you attention as a woman as being a victim of harassment so this is the angle she's going with. But Gillibrand is refusing to name her harassers. There's a surprise. Because she's trying to make a broader point about the ubiquity of sexism in the workplace. No, she's not trying to make a point about sexism. She's trying to uh, promote a shitty book. Um, but not just that. She's refusing to name her harassers because if she does, she will get her arse sued into oblivion for saying that these people were harassing her because they clearly, on her examples given there, were not harassing anyone at all. Not one person has been harassed in anything that she has said yet except us reading this shite. We've been fucking harassed. God, our brains are being harassed with the bullshit we've got to take in reading this crap. I refusing to name her, her harassers. Oh God, I tell you by the way, I'm a female senator, and all these men keep saying horrible things. One's saying this, the other's saying that, this, that, and the next thing. Who, who said that? Oh no, I don't want to say. Fuck off, you fucking liar. You're a fucking liar. You're an absolute fucking liar. Total liar. You know why you're not saying it? Because if you say, well actually it was this guy that said that, you know he'll come out with these fucking lawyers and say, I didn't fucking say that. How fucking dare you say I hate women? It's more important to elevate the debate. To have a national debate about how women are treated in the workplace, she told HuffPost Live. Because in the broad scheme, it's a drag on the economy when you're undervaluing women, nearly half of our workforce, and chronically paying them less, and treating them poorly, and not valuing them. What a load of fucking drivel. Absolute drivel. Fuck's sake. So, uh, hang on. So, rather than name who's doing all this, so that we can get them in open and say, hey, you shouldn't be talking to women like this. You shouldn't be saying things that women don't like to hear. You shouldn't be allowed to, in America, freely state your opinion. You're not allowed to do that. What do you mean amendments? Anyway, um, no, no, forget all that. What's more important is to have a national debate. So the entire fucking country is to have a debate on how women are treated in the fucking workplace because some fucking uh, anonymous phantom assholes called her fat. Seriously? Seriously? But that, that's what she's saying. A few guys called me fat once. Let's have a national debate about how women are treated in the workplace. No! It's you that's treated like that in the workplace. You can't say women are because you were called fat. Fuck's sake. Unfucking believable, man. 
Uh, and, and here we go with the sympathy thing. You could just hear the violin playing in the background as I read this, because in the, the broad scheme, it's a drag on the economy when you undervalue women. In America, the most privileged group on the face of the planet is the Western women. And in America, the women are the most privileged. And this is what she's saying. You're undervaluing women. They're nearly half a workforce and chronically paying them less for doing them less work and not doing all the hard jobs. Uh, chronically paying them less and treating them poorly and valuing them. Now as I read that out, wouldn't you think I was talking about child slaves making fucking Adidas shoes or some shit like that in another country? It doesn't sound like she's talking about women in America for fuck's sake. They were supposed to take them seriously. No! It's no! I'm not going to take you seriously. You're a fucking joke, man. The senator said, Women, it's just embarrassing reading that, isn't it? The senator. How the fuck did that become a senator? Did she just cry her way into the fucking job? The senator said, Women face harassment and sexism in the workplace every day. Men don't know. Men don't. And she hopes her own personal stories. Fucking yawn fest. That's what, that wasn't stories, Christ. She's fucking nearly sleeping when I read it out. Will help women to take control of their situations. Oh, I right, so... So I'm a woman, I'm going in the workplace, I'm being bullied and all that crap that you've made up. Uh, but I have to read your story, some phantom man calling you fat, and all of a sudden I'm going to go, right, that's it, I'm taking a stand. Oh, you fucking shut up. Women will get these undermining comments at all stages. Only women, remember. Only women, because sh things were said to her, right, that she didn't like. So that means... All women go through this, right? Women will get these undermining comments at all stages and in different industries. Only women, remember. It can really hurt them. <laughs> uh, she said, In politics, a statement about a woman's looks, positive or negative, can be very undermining to her credibility. And so I share the stories and I talk about it because I want women to make their own judgments and I want those judgments to be exactly what I'm thinking. Know the rules of your road. What all the crap? Was that supposed to be some fancy slogan? Is that in the front of your book? What all the fucking crap? What an absolute load of shit. Fuck's sake. And uh, let's, uh, here's what she's saying here. Uh, women get undermining comments in all industries. Uh, a woman's, if you focus on a woman's looks, whether it's positive or negative, it's undermining. And this happens to women. Women are always judged on their appearance, and especially in politics. You'll notice that nobody ever judges men in politics on their appearance. You'll notice that, right? Oh, what's that? Gee, that's funny. I've just found this article from years before she fucking opened her stupid fat fucking mouth. And it's from TNT magazine. And the heading of this article is Top 5 Ugly Politicians of 2011. So we've got five ugly politicians. And remember, this kind of focusing on appearance and, you know undermining people's appearance and making them feel bad. <laughs> Get PTSD here. And this only happens to women, right? So going on that logic, that would mean the top five ugly politicians of 2011, at least three of them are going to be women then, because it mostly happens to women, right? I mean, it happens to men, right? Oh, let's see, let's see the, the, the first one I've got. Oh, Newt Gingrich. Pretty sure, pretty sure he's a man. So Newt Gingrich is the first one. Number two is, when it loads, David Cameron, right? David Cameron is the second one. So Newt and then David, and the two of them have got something in common, you know what it is? Here's the third one, Nicholas Sarkozy. Now those three politicians and the top five ugly politicians have all got something in common. Kirsten, can you guess what it is? Have you figured it out yet? Can you see it yet? Who's number four then, eh? Oh, it's Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson has also got something in common with the previous ones. Do you know what it is yet, Kirsten? Can you figure it out yet? Remember, this only happens to women. Um, and number five is Eric Pickles. Right? Don't know what that is, but anyway. Um, these are the top five ugly politicians of 2011. And they've all got a strange thing in common. They all completely, completely prove that what she just said was one massive pile of bollocks. I mean, 
Oh, when will you go through this? I always focus on appearance. It's such a shame. <laughs> Top five ugly politicians. Article five men. And I'm pretty sure they're still working, by the way. Uh, so it didn't exactly damage them. So that must mean women and men are, are different. And it must mean men are stronger and better than women for a career in politics. Hmm, that's what I take from that. But again, this woman is in politics. Probably the number one rule in politics is to have a thick skin. I mean, if you don't have a thick skin, first of all, your opposition is going to tear you to shreds anyway, or they're going to, going to attempt to. The media are going to tear you to shreds, and the electorate are going to tear you to shreds. So, uh, if you don't have a thick skin, you shouldn't be in a world of politics. But this woman, uh, ghosts, you know, she hears voices and they say, you're fat. And, and all of a sudden, all women suffer this, and it's a problem for all women. And why is it a problem for all women? Because she's got a fucking book to sell, that's why. So she's pretending to care about women. Ladies, how do you feel about that? She's pretending to care about women. I care so much about women, so I do. Me, uh, please read my new book, titled I'm a Fucking Victim, even though I'm a senator in America. I'm a fucking victim. Christ almighty, man. Anyway, another quick uh, article just to show you. I'll post a link to these articles, but just uh, I won't go through it. I'll just show you the, what the gist. The ugly face of British politics. How you look counts. This is again from uh, the done uh, an analysis of the 2010 election in Britain. And they came up with uh, voters prefer male and female candidates who are easy on the eye. Right? Uh, and apparently, um, the better you look, male or female, the more likely, the more liked you'll be by the, the electorate, um, or so they say. But again, men and women it applies to all over the board. Uh, it is a bit shallow, you shouldn't judge a politician on their looks, but politicians should be able to take criticism about their looks anyway. I mean, could, could you imagine, right? Let's say Margaret Thatcher, right? Uh, I'm not allowed to like her, I'm Scottish, but I love Margaret Thatcher. Um, um, could you could you imagine her crying like a little girl? <laughs> Some random guy called me fat. She'd fucking slap them, man. Get the fuck out of here, man. Fucking call me fat, you fucking idiot. Be that. But this one, <laughs> I need to write a book about this. This is this is horrendous. Look what all women go through. They should all buy my book. Fuck off, weakling. Anyway, I'll leave it there for now. Hey, thank you for listening. Until next time. That's what happened to her, because that's what I'm, that's the picture I have in my mind. So that's what this evil Labour leader done, right? I've just had a baby. I've just been appointed to replace Hillary Clinton in the Senate. I have a lot to learn. So much on my plate. <laughs> and this man basically says to me, you're too fat to be elected statewide. Gillibrand recalled on Huffington Post Live Monday morning. At that moment, if I could have just disappeared, I would have. If I could have just melted in tears. Oh, Jesus, this is so sad. I would have. But I had to just sit there and talk to him. I didn't hear a word he said, but I wasn't in a place where I could tell him to go fuck himself. Right? She sounds very pleasant, you know. Um, so let's go through this paragraph and see what she's, basic, see what she's basically said here, right? Blah, 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 blah. And this man basically says to me, you're too fat to be elected statewide. What that means is, when she says he basically said that, that means he didn't say that. He said something completely different, but she translated it into that, right? And how do I know that? Well, first of all, that's a well-known women trick, right? They do that all the, they do that shit all the time. Uh, that's one way I know it. But the other way I know it is because in the same fucking paragraph, she then says, um, I didn't hear a word he said. So she's sitting there, she doesn't hear a word he said, but she does know that he said, basically, uh, that you're too fat to be elected statewide. <laughs> I mean, so, so what we know from this is, that didn't happen, right? But, what you have to understand is, right, somebody's talking to this woman, and somebody makes a remark and says, uh, you're too fat to be elected statewide, right? Which actually says more about the electorate than her, but anyway... According to her, that's harassment. And we're supposed to respect her. We're supposed to uh, take women in positions like this seriously. 
No, <laughs> no, Margaret Thatcher, I'll take her seriously. Uh, I Anne Widdicombe, I'll take her seriously. This? No, <laughs> not a chance. Not a fucking chance would I take this seriously. What a joke. Uh, in her new book, well, ain't that a fucking surprise? She's got a new book out and she's pretending to be a victim in order to plug the book. Off the sidelines, Gillibrand shares several anecdotes about male colleagues and political leaders making comments about her weight during and after her pregnancy. She recalled one colleague warning her about getting porky after the birth of her second child. Another lawmaker told her she's even pretty when she's fat. And an older senator once grabbed her waist and quipped that he likes his girls chubby. Right. So I'm guessing when you're pregnant, he put his hand on and went, Oh, eh, I wonder if she's a, a nice chubby healthy baby or something like that. And you thought, Oh, he's basically saying I'm fat. But, um, aye, in a new book, so if you're a woman, right, and you've wrote a book, right, and you want to sell that book, now the best option, right, I personally believe anyway, the best option is to write a book worthy of reading, so that word of mouth goes around, lots of people are recommending it, and people eventually go, oh, God, see, that's certainly a few people have recommended that book to me, I think I'll read that, you know. But since she's wrote a shitty book, uh, and there's no doubt it's a shitty book, and the reason I know that is because the tactic she uses to promote the book is to pretend she's a victim of harassment and play off of that, because nothing gets your attention as a woman as being a victim of harassment. So this is the angle she's going with. But Gillibrand is refusing to name her harassers. There's a surprise. Because she's trying to make a broader point about the ubiquity of sexism in the workplace. No. She's not trying to make a point about sexism, she's trying to uh, promote a shitty book. Um, but not just that, she's refusing to name her harassers because if she does, she will get her arse sued into oblivion for saying that these people were harassing her because they clearly, on her examples given there, were not harassing anyone at all. Not one person has been harassed in anything that she has said yet except us reading this shite, we've been fucking harassed. God, our brains are being harassed with the bullshit we've got to take in reading this crap. Man, I'm uh, refusing to name her, her harassers. Oh God, I tell you by the way, I'm a female senator and all these men keep saying all... Hi, thanks for listening. I want to talk about a woman called Kirsten Gillibrand. It might be Gillibrand, but I don't care. Um, she's, there's an article in the Huffington Post Oh God, you always get this nonsense about women don't get respect and, you know, and stuff and it's, when women like Kirsten behave the way they do, it can make it difficult for the average person to see women as respect worthy or to be taken seriously, you know, um, it's, it's very difficult, no matter what field you happen to be in, where you are, it's very difficult to take someone seriously or have respect for someone when you have to walk on eggshells whenever you're around that person, right? The first thing I want to show here, right, is just out of curiosity, I'm just curious about something. I wonder what harassment means. Let's look it up, shall we? Oh, look, aggressive pressure or intimidation. Just remember that, right? Harassment means aggressive pressure or intimidation, right? That's what harassment is, real harassment, right? Let's hear what Kirsten Gillibrand has got to say. I couldn't tell my harasser to go fuck himself. That's the headline of the article. Uh, so she's got a, an harasser, right? Uh, and she can't tell this harasser, which is a man, to go fuck himself, right? Okay. Uh, Okay, right, so right away from, I mean, this is what I mean, this, is, this woman is apparently a senator. Um, I've never heard of her. I'm now annoyed that I've heard of her because she's utterly useless and pathetic. Um, anyway, let's read what it says, right? Senator Kirsten Gillibrand said Monday that when a male Labour leader harassed her about her weight several years ago after she'd had a baby, 
she had a few choice words she couldn't say at the time. Now, just to stop right there, this is why I focused on what harassment means, right? Now, uh, a male Labour leader harassed her about her weight. Now, I don't know about you, but I get this vision in my mind, right? This little image where she walks out the house, you know, she's walking down the street, maybe she's going to the shop, and a car drives past very slow, you know, creeps up on her, the window rolls down, it's him. Yeah, fat bastard! And starts throwing pies at her, or maybe he throws a salad at her and says, fucking eat that, you bloody fat bugger. You know, or something like that, you know. If that happened, that to me is harassing someone about their weight. Right, that's what that is to me. If somebody says, I was harassed because of my weight, that's kind of what I picture. Someone kind of shouting at them in the street and stuff. And, oh, yeah, look at it, look what we've got here. Beep, 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 beep fatty. That's kind, that's harassment, that. That's kind of harassment, right? I wonder if that's...